It's launch checked and countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. On screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its liftoff from Vandenberg Space Force Base's Space Launch Complex 4 East about nine minutes from now. This afternoon's launch is our fourth launch from Vandenberg this year. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andy Tran, and I'm a quality engineer here at SpaceX. I'm joining you today from Hawthorne, California, which is about 170 miles from our West Coast launch pad that you see on screen. On today's flight, we'll be taking another 53 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit in order to expand our coverage around the globe. A bit later in the webcast, we'll share a couple of updates on our growing coverage in Canada and across Europe. But before we get to that, we wanted to recognize a handful of celebrations during the month of May. Not only is it the month for sending Star Wars themed memes and celebrating the amazing women and moms in our life, it's also a time when we recognize and, excel and celebrate all the incredible contributions made by generations of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. These contributions have had a great impact to our history, society, and culture. Here at SpaceX, our Asian American Pacific Islander Employee Network is hosting a variety of events where we'll celebrate traditional cuisine, movies, and other fun activities. So be sure to take some time this month to send love to your Asian American and Pacific Islander friends and neighbors. For now, let's take a closer look at our Falcon 9 on the pad. If you're not familiar, Falcon 9, also known as F9, is a two-stage rocket and the first orbital class rocket capable of reflight that is designed and manufactured by SpaceX. F9 stands 70 meters tall, which is almost as tall as the Taj Mahal in India, and is named after the, Falcon, uh, the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. The Falcon 9 that you see on screen rolled out to the pad Wednesday morning and then went vertical a few hours after that. This particular first stage has supported four missions, NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, the Sentinel-6 Michael Froelich mission, and two past Starlink missions. And if you've been following SpaceX, you know that reusability is one of our top priorities as it's the key to reducing the cost of space Start access for all of us. And being able to reuse multiple components of our rockets plays a big part in making that a reality. In addition to the Star Wars aspect to the name, the number nine in Falcon 9 references the nine M1D engines on the first stage, but there's actually 10 engines on the rocket. The second stage has a slightly modified engine on it called the Merlin Vacuum or MVAC engine. This engine has a larger nozzle which allows the second stage to perform better in the vacuum of space. And much like an assembly line, each part of the rocket plays a very important role to the launch. While the first stage powers us up and out of the Earth's atmosphere to space, the second stage takes the satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit. Uh, we just heard the call-outs that stage uh, one, RP1 load is complete. engine chill has begun, and second stage thrust vector control actuators should start within the next few minutes. These are also known as the engine wiggle test. Uh, we move the thrust chamber slightly to make sure that the guidance hardware is a go for flight. The first stage would do the same wiggle test just seconds before ignition. The large barrel structure with the pointed nose that is on top of the second stage is the payload fairing. It's composed of two halves made up of carbon composite material that come together to protect our satellites until we're in the vacuum of space. Around three minutes into flight, once we've exited Earth's atmosphere, we will jettison the fairing halves and attempt to retrieve, retrieve them once they return to Earth. We want to jettison the fairings as soon as we can as the weight of the fairing actually decreases sec second stage performance. And for reference, the pale fairing is about 40 feet tall with a 17 foot diameter. Uh, to put that size into perspective, you could fit an average fire truck inside both of the fairing halves. 
And as, as those fairing halves return to Earth, so will our first stage, which is set to land on our drone ship that you see on screen. This one is named, of course, I Still Love You, and it's currently positioned near Baja, Mexico today. If successful, it will mark the 112th Falcon recovery tanks, of a Falcon 9 track. first stage. So the call we just heard is we're beginning to pressurize for uh, retracting of the strong back, which is part of the transporter erector, or TE. Uh, the transporter erector's job is to roll out the rocket to the pad and raise it to that vertical launch position that you see on screen right now. Now, in order to retract the strong back, we're going to be opening up the clamp arms right underneath the fairing halves. Uh, once those arms are open, then we begin to recline that strong back away from the vehicle. Uh, to its pre-launch position, and as we get closer to T-0, it will continue to recline away, providing clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. So if you look closely uh, behind the, the, the white clouds there, you can see that those clamp arms have indeed opened up, and we should start to see that strong back uh, begin to recline away from the vehicle. And there it goes. So as that's happening, if you've been following Starlink development, then you know that Starlink is a constellation of multiple satellites in low Earth orbit and has the potential to service the entire globe. Because Starlink does not rely on traditional ground infrastructure, it's great for places where connectivity has typically been a challenge or non-existent. Earlier this week, the government of Quebec, Canada announced it will fund the deployment of Starlink in up to 10,000 homes throughout the province. The grant is part of a program that aims to extend high-speed internet access, access throughout the region, and Starlink will serve the homes in hard-to-reach areas. The service will be deployed to participating homes by the end of this September. Starlink has also gone live in Greece and Hungary. These additions bring us to servicing a total of 36 markets around the globe. If you're wondering when service will be available in your area, Stage yesterday the Starlink team released an updated Starlink availability map you can enter an address or just zoom into certain areas on the map to identify locations that have active service. The areas in light blue are locations where you can order immediately, and where there is a wait list, it'll tell you the current expected time frame for service availability. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, you can find it on the Starlink website at starlink.com slash map. So we are about T minus two and a half minutes Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. We've got some clear skies out in Vandenberg. We are watching for ground wind speeds as we get closer and closer to T0. You can see that the strongback has indeed reclined away from the vehicle. This white clouds that you see around the vehicle is the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tanks as needed. And when that gas comes out and contacts the California H2 air, load is complete. the humid moist uh, air condenses that and turns it into the clouds that you see. And that call that we just heard is the last of propellant loading for the vehicle. So we are fully fueled and just over a minute away from liftoff of 53 more Starlink satellites. Falcon 9 is in startup. With startup, that means that both stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. LD is go for launch. And that was the launch director providing the final go for launch. All systems are go. Let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. Go south here, go south. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. We are T plus 42 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4E, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites into space. Moments ago, we began to throttle down those nine engines on the first stage in preparation for a period known as Max Q. This is where the vehicle experienced the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Max Q. And that was the confirmation of Max Q. Coming up in about a minute, we have a series of events happening back to back. First up is Miko, or main engine cutoff. This is where the two stages, excuse me, the nine engines on the bottom of the first stage will shut off in preparation for stage separation. This is where the two stages will separate from one another, with the second stage continuing with SES 1, uh, also Start known as. Back engine chill. Second engine start one, where that MVAC engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to carry our Starlink satellites to orbit. And then shortly after, SCS-1 will have fairing deploy, where the two fairing halves on the top of the second stage will jettison themselves and make their way back to Earth. Um, the first stage after stage separation will also be making its way back to Earth to land on our drone ship. Again, uh, it's currently parked in off the coast of Baja, Mexico, waiting for this booster's fifth landing attempt. For now, we are enjoying some gorgeous views of the West Coast as things continue to look good for today's mission. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Bearing separation. And again, continuing with the gorgeous views, we saw a ground shot of main engine cutoff. Now on screen on the left-hand side is a view of the first stage booster. Uh, it is making its way back to our drone ship. The right-hand side of the screen is a view of our second stage Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, the fairing halves have um, deployed, and so we have our Starlink satellites exposed to the vacuum of space. Uh, they have a couple more minutes to go before we actually shut down that second stage engine and um, insert our second stage and the satellites into a, an orbit. The fairing halves, again, are going to be making their way back along with the first stage for recovery. The first stage needs to execute two burns uh, in order to make its way back to our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. The first is an entry burn that's coming up around the six, the T plus six and a half minute mark. This is a three engine burn that slows down the first stage before uh, we hit the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then around the T plus uh, eight minute mark, we'll have the landing burn. This will be the final burn before our landing attempt for the first stage. And this one is a single engine burn. T, T plus four and a half minutes into flight. Engine performance on the second stage is nominal. If you look closely on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see some puffs of gas. That is nitrogen from our attitude control systems. Um, that nitrogen will help to orient our first stage 
properly in order for it to land. And you also notice that we have two of our four grid fins uh, on camera right now. Those will swivel and... Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Those will swivel and help to guide and steer that first stage back to our targeted landing site. If you are just joining us, we successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4E, located at our West Coast Vandenberg Space Force Base Launch Site. After liftoff, we had successful main engine cutoff, successful stage separation. Our second stage engine has been ignited. And now the next milestone for this mission is the entry burn coming up in about 30 seconds. Stage one, entry burn startup. You can see on screen three of the nine first stage engines have relit. This burn is expected to last for about 20 seconds before we shut it off again. You can see the speed of the first stage at the bottom left hand side of the screen. We're starting entry to decrease that. So in about a minute, we'll have the landing burn. This is also expected to last for about 20 seconds. During the landing burn, this is where we'll be deploying our landing legs and uh, we'll make our fifth attempt at landing this first stage booster. Shortly after the landing stage burn one. ends, yes, we'll be listening for a call out of SECO. This stands for second engine cutoff. Uh, we'll shut off the engine that you see on screen and then we'll listen for another call out of good orbital insertion. As a reminder, um, after we get successful uh, orbit confirmation, we will be ending the webcast, but we'll have audio up if you want to follow along, and we'll confirm deployment of our satellites via social media. Stage one, transonic. About 20 seconds away from the beginning of that landing burn, Second stage performance and trajectory continue to be nominal. Expected loss of signal, Vandenberg LLC. Stage two, terminal guidance. Stage one, landing burn. So the call outs, we heard that we have begun the landing burn. Hopefully we can get footage. Stage two, FTS is safe. Of the first stage landing on our drone ship. Stage one, landing leg deploy. And there's a view of our drone ship uh, positioned off the coast of Baja, Mexico, expecting that first stage booster to land here shortly. Stage one, landing confirmed. So we have audio and video confirmation now of the first stage. Uh, that is the fifth successful landing Second for this particular call. booster and the 112th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage booster. We also heard confirmation of a successful second engine cutoff. Expected loss of signal, SNI. Nominal orbit insertion. And that was the final call out that we're waiting for, a successful orbital insertion. With the confirmation of both successful second engine cutoff and a good orbit, We'll be ending our webcast for today's launch. For those of you that are interested, we'll be confirming payload deployed via our social channels, so keep an eye out for that. Alternatively, if you'd like to follow along through, through payload deploy, we'll leave the mission audio live on our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks again to all of our viewers for joining today. If you are looking for more launch content, don't worry. We're currently targeting another Starlink launch tomorrow, May 14th at 4.40 p.m. Eastern time, so be sure to tune in. 
uh, and we will see you next time.